This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Previously, previously, <laughs> previously on Almfab, <laughs> I framed up a shed. And now I need to add a window and a door. And I love using vintage pieces for stuff like this. They're way more affordable. They're usually better built. And all they take is a little bit of elbow grease to get them framed up. And I, I'm gonna share with you how I found them, how I install them. Uh, they usually don't come with hardware. They usually don't come pre-framed, pre-hung. Um, so I'm gonna have to go through all of that. And hopefully it'll help you guys out there if you want to use some vintage hardware in your projects. second use my local architectural salvage place and it's a great place to find all sorts of odds and ends. Walking through the window section I found this mullioned sash window and I don't know why but this one really spoke to me. It's got wavy glass and the price was pretty good too. The best door that I found in the door section is this Douglas fir door. It's in a little bit of a rough state but I know it's gonna clean up really well. It's solid wood, which is pretty awesome. And it was the right size. And at 95 bucks, that's pretty darn good for a solid door. I, I gotta believe that it'd be six or $700 if you bought it new. I'm gonna start by restoring the sash window. So a window sash is made to move up and down. It's got a lock on it. That's not how I'm gonna use this. I'm actually gonna use this in a different orientation. I'm gonna use it vertically. And I'm gonna frame it so that it doesn't move up and down or in and out or anything like that. So it's just gonna be a fixed window. Uh, to make room for that frame, I wanna scrape off all the excess paint and, and caulk that's on it. Uh, but being extra careful because there's probably some lead in this paint. So I'm wearing a respirator and cleaning everything down with a wet rag after I'm finished and throwing that stuff out. This window lock was in the way and I wanted to remove it now because if I break a pane of glass, I'd rather do it right now before I've put a lot of energy into it. So I just went for it. I broke up the little uh, wedge of wood underneath and then used a screwdriver to, to back out the nails. I was worried about using a pry bar against this uh, and this took a little bit of time, but I was able to get them out in the end and not break the glass. There's this sloped section on the inside of the of the window, and I believe it's there to prevent it from racking as it slides up and down. I'm not really certain of that, but what I am sure of that is that I need to cut it off because I want the same width all the way around the window so I can build a frame around it. I found a piece of 2x4 that's also Douglas fir. Uh, this doesn't have to be great material to build the frame out of, it just needs to be fairly stable and not free. I trimmed out a groove with my dado stack and just snuck up on the cut until it fit really well. Now there's one problem on this window. On the front side, there is a chip that had come out of it. Uh, I'm not, it looks pretty fresh. It may have happened at the store or when they were moving. It may have happened when it was at the store, or it might have happened when uh, the, the window was actually removed, but no matter what, I have to fix it because it's, it's kind of a weak spot in the whole window. So I'm going to be doing what's called uh, making a Dutchman uh, patch. Basically, you cut out more of the material so it's nice, square, and flat, so you have a good glue surface, and then you can trim up a piece to fit in there and then sand that flush, and it, it should be a pretty seamless fix. patch is held into place with a waterproof wood glue and I left it overnight and then trimmed off the excess the next morning. I also used my block plane to round over the edges so that it matched the rest of the window. The next step was just to cut down the frame to fit. Now I will say that with my window situation, I, I didn't feel like I needed a window sill. Uh, if you're gonna be making this for uh, an exposed area, so this is actually underneath a roof, so it's not gonna get any water at all, I don't think. Um, so I didn't bother making a sill, but you want uh, an angled section at the base um, if you're gonna be making it another way. But 
I, I just sealed it up, used some some caulking uh, as I was putting it together, and screwed it into place with some deck screws. I'll post some links down below to some videos that you can watch uh, to build a, a proper sill. Uh, I just for a shed like this and the way that the window is being used, this was a much faster, simpler way to build. Um, but I, I would recommend doing research if you're going to be using this in, in an area that's going to be exposed to a lot of water. I caulked all the corners of the frame and I also went over the top of it with a, a primer, an outdoor primer and an outdoor paint. Uh, this will help seal in everything, uh, make sure that, that water is not going to get in. But as you can see, the location of this is, is pretty unexposed. It's also on the north side of the building, which we get all of our rain out of the south. And so I feel pretty confident that it's, it's not going to take on water. When I put the window in, it was admittedly tighter than I wanted it to be. Ideally, you'd have an eighth of an inch all the way around so that you can level out the window. Uh, I, I got pretty lucky. I was able to level it out pretty well uh, with what I had. I think I was closer to a sixteenth. Um, so it's, it's always good to have a bit more of an air gap when you're when you're installing windows. <laughs> After that, I started in on the trim for the outside of the window. I'm gonna be using a pretty thick brick molding on this uh, because I'm gonna be putting shingles on the outside, cedar shake shingles, and so I need a good bit of depth. This is, I believe, an inch and a quarter deep brick molding, and uh, it's actually PVC. Uh, this is my first time trying the PVC, which it's gonna show in a minute. Uh, you apparently just use the regular plumber's PVC adhesive. I tried the blue tape method to hold it together and it was kind of a, a mess. It was hard to, I, I, th I think that that's, that stuff starts to set up pretty quickly and I couldn't get enough pressure on all four corners. So when I checked the first corner, it just immediately fell apart in my hands. Maybe I didn't put enough adhesive on to begin with, but it was easy enough to go back and, and re-adhere it. I just went corner by corner uh, for the first two corners, and then I had to do the last two corners all at once, uh, but that seemed to work a, a good bit better. I just held it into place for about 15 to 20 seconds, and after that, the, the frame was surprisingly strong. Off camera, I put a bead of caulk along the back side of the frame uh, so that when I press it up against the siding, it would it would sort of squeeze out. And then I was nail able to nail it into place. I made sure that it was nice and level. I will say that the, the, the window itself is not perfectly square because of the age that it is. So having a square frame around it actually worked to make it look a little bit, a little bit better. Once it was installed, I could run another bead of caulk around the outside and the inside of the trim, and then the window was done. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's talk about Almfab for a second. I started my business back in 2015 and I started it because I was in a dead end job and I needed to make a change. One of the first things that I did was I got almfab.com on Squarespace and started building my website. I can honestly say that it's a big reason why I was able to get this company off the ground. I was able to build a website simply, quickly, and make it look really professional. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. I started out as a home remodeling company, working for friends and friends of friends, totally word of mouth, and the only thing that legitimized me as a company was my website. I started off my website by using one of their amazing templates, made it look super professional, and it works well across all devices. The home remodeling business did really well for me, but it wasn't my passion, so I pivoted pretty quickly to making high-end furniture. I changed my website completely, and it was really easy to do 
with Squarespace. Now my website features plans that you can buy, a full email list, as well as a blog where you can find all the videos that I make. I'm confident that Squarespace has the ability to change with me as I continue to expand and grow. If you have a business or a side hustle that you want to promote, I cannot recommend Squarespace more. Visit squarespace.com to start a free trial, or when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash michaelalm to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Thanks, Squarespace. Now let's get back to the build. As I mentioned before, the door was in pretty rough shape. And with something like this, sometimes the best place to start is just to clean it. I started with some mineral spirits, just wiped it down, got rid of all the dust and, and debris. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit on there. And to get into the little tiny spaces, I used a toothbrush. The door had a couple of long bolts on the sides of it. And I, from my understanding, it's, it's used to keep the, the door flat. But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut the bottom of this door off to make it the right size for the shed. And one of the bolts is like right in the middle of where I need it. So I removed this super long bolt and pulled out the washer with an ice pick. So there's a bolt on either side. They're not at the same level, but one of them is gonna be running through uh, this the bottom of the door so I decided to drill that out and hammer in a, a glued up dowel so that I could uh, fill in that hole as best as possible before cutting it. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm switching the swing of the door to an, an outswing door. So I need to replicate the bevel, uh, but I need it to go the opposite way. These doors are beveled so that when you close, the, the front edge doesn't catch. So all I did was I, I lined up the track saw on the outside edge and then recut the bevel. You only need a couple of degrees bevel in order, in order for this to work. So you can see now that's, that's reversed. The next thing to do is to set the hinges on the opposite side. To fill in the old screw holes, I found that using just a bamboo skewer and some waterproof wood glue and then hammering it into place was enough to clog up those holes so that I could re-drill them. found a couple of hinges that were the exact width of the door, so I didn't really need to mortise it out uh, so much as just remove this, this little mortised edge. You will be able to see the front edge of the, of the hinge, but that's actually going to be on the inside now, so I don't think it really matters. This is what's known as a self-centering or a VIX bit. Uh, they're super handy to have in the shop, especially when you're setting hinges, because it drills the hole perfectly in the center at the right size and the right depth. I'm gonna be building the frame out of one by six stock. This is one by six pine. I checked to make sure that it was pretty not free. Now I'm just setting where the, the hinges are gonna go so I can mortise them out. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. I like to cut the grain with a knife first and then trace it out with, with uh, a pencil so I can see the line really well and come back with a palm router and, um, and get rid of the excess. And then I finish up the cleanup with a mortising chisel just to get into those corners, make sure they're nice and square and tight to the line. I 
I pre-drilled the holes we're using that self-centering bit and then attach the, the hinges to it just to check to make sure that everything's fitting up right. And good thing I did that because they weren't. You notice when this closes, it closes with the door kind of hanging out of the frame. I realized at this point that there was a bevel on the hinge side as well. So I had to take everything apart and then set up to cut an opposing bevel once again. And then I had to mortise out the hinges again as well and then get them all fitted up and, and re-drilled. It was fine. Uh, it didn't really take all that long and the fit it was so much better. So now you can see it's it sort of goes a little bit further than it needs to to close and that's what I want. Another custom element for the door is the door threshold and I'm going to be making that out of a 2x6 that I have also left over from uh, another build around the house. This is pressure treated and uh, I'm basically making a big rabbit so that it's not quite as thick. So that when I slot it into place on the, the opening for the door, it has a place to sort of register against. And on the opposing side, I'm cutting a slope and this is where the door is gonna kind of close to. It's gonna allow water to run off. My table saw blade wasn't tall enough to cut it completely. So I just uh, finished it off with a block plane and that worked relatively well. I, I probably should have clamped it to something. The last cut is to cut out the rabbit. And then I took it over to the router table and put a big round over on the front. This is just gonna make sure that it, it's less likely to chip out when I'm rolling a wheelbarrow in and out of the, the garden shed. With the side of the frame attached, I used an angle gauge to mark the same angle that I have on the threshold, and then I just cut it down with the chop saw. I actually cut two of these so that I could match it on the opposite side, and then I could reattach that side and start setting up to build the rest of the frame. the opposing side on I used some handy shims I think these are eighth inch ham handy shims and again I just attached the top with a couple of deck screws I like to paint the bottoms of the these pieces because whenever I see one of these doors and it's rotted out it's always rotted out right here so putting a little bit of paint on the bottom of it is gonna seal it up before I attach the threshold and speaking of the threshold, this goes on with a couple of screws. I also recoated the threshold with some wood preservative uh, just to make sure that it doesn't rot out. When you cut into pressure treat, it, it actually removes a lot of the pressure treating preservative that's already in there. So it's always a good idea to recoat it. Next thing to do is install the jam and I'm just using some more handy shims. These are a quarter inch to attach it. I'm, I've got wood glue on the back side of this so that they stay on there nice and strong. And the gap will allow for any sort of padding I might wanna do uh, to prevent the door from slamming. Now we should talk about the swing of this door because this is an outswing door, which really you don't do for exterior doors. They're not as good at keeping water out um, but in this case, my shed's so small that I, if I were to swing the door inward, it would take up way too much room. So if you were to build this door for an in-swing, it's exactly the same thing, except for the threshold would be facing the other direction. You'd also want a groove around the, the jam to accept uh, um, weather stripping. But again, this is a shed, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. When hanging the door frame, I use a couple of door frame shims. These are extra long, so you can kind of get them back in there. I also like to use two so that you create a flat bearing surface. And then I screw through the exact point where the hinge is attached. This is where the most strain is gonna be on the door. I start from the hinge side because that's the most essential side to get 
plumb. Uh, if it's not plumb, then your door is going to either slowly swing open or slowly swing closed when you have it like halfway open. And that can be pretty annoying when you're trying to get tools in and out. Once the hinge side is done, it's pretty simple to go around the rest of the door frame and shim it out and screw it into place. This door being solid wood is incredibly heavy, so I was happy to call in Ashley to help attach it. And with the two of us, we were able to get the door hung pretty easily. Wow, first try. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. All right, cool, we can put all of them in. Yes. I was really happy to see the reveal on this door. It hung perfectly with perfect spacing all the way around. It doesn't always go that way. And it was also really convenient that it was pre-drilled for the door handle because it's a vintage door. It started by installing the new hardware on the door itself. And then uh, once that was tightened up, I could close the door and it, it marks the paint uh, pretty easily. So you can see where to drill out the hole for the striker plate. And I just use a 7 8 bit centered in that door and check to make sure that it locks, which it did. So then I can mortise out for the strike plate, which this is uh, straightforward. I just laid the strike plate on it and traced it out again with a knife and then cleaned it up with a chisel. wanted to leave the door natural wood it just was so stained that it would have taken a lot of work to restore it um, so I decided to paint it I, I used a couple coats of primer and about four coats of a really heavy-duty outdoor white semi-gloss paint and I'm really happy I did I think it looks a lot cleaner and I did the same thing around the window the window trim and the door trim which I did off camera it was the same basic process as installing the, the window trim It's so stormy out here. It's it's gonna rain soon. Um, as you can see, I've made some progress on the shed. I've got the shake shingles up, and that's gonna be the subject of the next video. Which th this was the most fun that I had on this entire project is putting on these shingles. Uh, I I'm sorry that it's taken so long to get the videos out because that is a very long process. I had no idea but i've learned a lot so look forward to that that video will come out next week and i'm also working on plans for the shed so if you're curious about that that's going to happen uh, if you want to know the instant those plans come out join my email list I, I send out emails whenever i introduce new products on my website also as always a big thank you to my patreon supporters you guys are the best i appreciate your support every single month and of course a thank you to squarespace as well for sponsoring this video i'll catch you guys on the next one bye